Hi everyone, Dajia Hao. Uh, my name is Wojtek Jaworski and I run a firm that focuses on increasing wishlist and sales in China. Just a while back we had uh, we heard amazing presentation by by Damian Damian Eszkowski from Indie Game the Polish Indie Game the Foundation which gave a brief uh, understanding of how the whole Chinese market works. Uh, what are the basic rules when it comes to entering different platforms, whether you need an ISBN license or not, how, was, how does marketing work, etc., etc. In this presentation, I'm going to cover more practical aspects of uh, running a marketing campaign. Also, I'll try to help you take first steps towards understanding it, uh, meaning, let's say, one day you'll have sudden wish list spike, right? 5,000 wish lists out of nowhere from China. And you might want to find out what was the reason behind it. So I'll try to help you do that on your own because regardless whether you'll be working uh, you'll sometime in the future, maybe you do have one right now, uh, hire a Chinese employee or work with a publisher, work with a partner, I believe that it's crucial to understand the basics, meaning platforms, how to be able to verify the reports that your partner will send you, how to be able to be able to check where those 5,000 wish lists came from, and possibly repeat it. Repeat the process just by, for example, in this case, reaching out to Chinese influencer and sharing digital assets with him. The title of this uh, presentation is Through Chinese Influencers' Eyes. Well, because in majority of the cases, those are the people who have the biggest impact in terms of selling your games in China, basically. So you want to get in touch with them, you want to understand how they think, how the Chinese, how Chinese players think, how they interact with games too. Damian mentioned there'll be a lot of the digressions, etc. Like there is a, um, I in, in my presentations I like to go off topic from time to time, so please do forgive me about that. But I think that by giving you more and more examples from real life, um, from companies that we've worked with, projects that we um, that we focused on, you'll be able to uh, get better value from 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 this speech. Um, so uh, as Damian also mentioned that. Uh, and you have to realize that over 90% of the, in, the whole internet traffic in China is through mobile. So the way that Chinese players interact with any type of content about your game is mostly through mobile. So when it comes to content that you produce or um, ways that they'll, they'll watch it, situations in which they'll, they'll watch it, they'll mostly do it on their phones. It has huge, huge implications. So, moving on. Um, and the pilot, is it working? Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, now we'll get going. A few words about uh, about myself, just to give you a little bit of context, like where do I come from? What's, what's, what's the backstory here? Um, I spent two years in China, uh, used to work as a freelance uh, translator and player manager for uh, during several esports events, like for example Intel Extreme Masters and uh, PUBG Mobile in Berlin. Um, so, so that was one of my like first touch points with with the industry, and. Uh, uh, like we first started, uh, uh, we first when when COVID hit, uh, we like I decided to establish uh, to find uh, find a new place, find a new new area uh, in which I could affect um, sales um, by doing marketing. And when I established the company, we weren't focused at uh, game dev for for the first year. And we aren't focused on uh, PC games for 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 f like first first few months. We had to find our product market fit, and it was uh, why 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 am, I, why am I telling you this story is to also help you understand the the 
um, because it shows how the whole market works, basically. We had, to find, we had to find a place in which, by doing content, influencers, uh, and community, any type of marketing activity, we could solve the challenge of selling games in China um, without the necessity of establishing a company. Um, signing uh, distribution agreements. Just a place, an area where we can go directly into marketing and do that remotely also, which is essential in this case. Uh, because we do operate on, under Polish jurisdiction, we are based in, um, based in Europe. Uh, the last point that I'm showing here is the, the fact that I participated in a Chinese reality show, which is another, like a story of its own. Um, maybe we can cover that during during the party, but uh, it was the premise of the show was to uh, talk about China from and through um, foreigners' perspective, through foreigners' eyes so, somehow. And I'm covering that also because we were kind of you know debunking stereotypes about China, and in very often influencers that post content about your games are. Um, are those who are, so it's reversed in a way. They are creating or modeling the narrative about, uh, about the games and selling them to their, uh, to their audiences, whether they do it on purpose uh, or not. Uh, so I founded the company in 2021. Um, right now, there are 10 of us. We're based, uh, based in Poland, uh, based in Warsaw, but we do work remotely. We've worked thus far with more than 30 studios, mostly developers and publishers from Europe and the States. And this month, one of, uh, uh, one of my team members is going to China to participate in, uh, in a game dev event with one of our clients. And then next year, we're going to attend WePlay. So and I'm going to spend like three, three weeks, weeks in China because uh, in order to do large-scale campaigns, in order to um, to be able to um, to basically generate the biggest possible uh, results, you have to overcome some of the um, challenges related with the Chinese market, and some majority of them are actually administrative ones. To give you one example, if uh, you wanted to register a Douyin account, you'd have to use a Chinese phone number. So we can either, uh, and our logic and our values are being transparent and also the ownership of all the accounts stays within the, um, the client. So stays within uh, a publisher or a developer. So when we do register a social media account, we use our client's phone number. So in that case, we wouldn't be able to, uh, to do it um, like this. So that way, by going to China, exploring different options, possibly different models, we'll be able to overcome that, uh, that challenge. Some picks about us, but uh, let's get to um, business soon. Um, quick plug-in. Um, in this presentation, I'm, I'm going to, as I mentioned, give you like a step-by-step -step guide on how to download uh, Chinese apps, Get, uh, check your um, check viewership of the videos posted about your um, your game, um, but uh, I will not go into case studies results, our logic behind our um, our marketing tactics, etc. Not at least not in too, so much detail, but you can check out the uh, presentation on Digital Dragons uh, when it comes to. Uh, to that. So, for example, the process behind influencer outreach. These are some of um, some of the projects, some of the clients that we've uh, either worked with or do work with uh, right now. And for example, Newfangled Games is the company that I uh, that I mentioned before. Um, they got invited to participate in this uh, um, kind of like quasi government slash uh, private uh, event. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be going there to accompany them uh, on site. And this is actually one of the like one of good opportunities to be able to get in touch with your future Chinese partners, investors, possibly, etc. So um, it's at some point if, China, if Chinese markets uh, 
if at least like one third of the revenue uh, from, from by selling your games comes from China, it's worth to at some point at least travel and meet uh, people there. Um, so and to establish your own network. All right. So the question is: Your game popular in China? You might ask, why? Why should I care? Uh, well, um, it's worth to know um, if you're trying to decide. Let's say you have ten IPs, right? Or uh, you have a few few games in your portfolio, and there are a few marketing beats, right? With um, with those upcoming titles, and you want to decide on first thing: how to allocate marketing budget, how to adjust or not to adjust your marketing strategy towards China, how to identify the potential underlying, uh, like the potential potential there, how to be able to um, catch all of it and be able to decide on the action plan moving moving forward. So I'm going to share some of the tactics that we that we use uh, to be able to forecast or at least plan uh, plan out the uh, the activities. Uh, some of the um, areas here might be uh, a repetition from from the previous talks by but we're going to I'll try to uh, dive even uh, even deeper. So let's first uh, cover market potential. It's said that there are over 660 or 600, depending on, on the statistics, but over 660 million active players in China, whereas almost 80% of them are mobile gamers. So when it comes to PC or at least Steam players, it's estimated uh, at around 10%. Um, so we're talking about around 50 to, to 60, 65 million players, um, million PC players in China. So that's the, that's the market potential to compare. Um, and to give you a, a context, all around 24% of the uh, Steam player base uses Chinese as their main, main language. And when you, uh, quick digression, also, when you look at your um, Steam charts and the, the sales coming from, uh, from Chinese-speaking regions, very often, like very often, Chinese players do use VPNs. Like very often, it's like five to ten percent, generally speaking. This, these are the estimates. Um, and the sales from China appearing might be like you have to consider all the Chinese-speaking regions, Hong Kong included. So some of them, them might be using uh, VPNs to connect, so they might appear as sales from Hong Kong. Um, and the question is here, is entering Chinese market as difficult as they say? And we have to stop here for a moment. Let's differentiate two things. Entering Chinese market and selling to Chinese-speaking gamers. These are completely two, two completely different things. Because once your game is on Steam, Chinese gamers can access it, period. At least right now. Because, uh, well, uh, it might change because right now you do have two Steams in China. The one um, that Valve cooperates with, with Perfect World, so it's, but it serves as a local distribution platform. As compared to Steam uh, Global uh, being the international distribution platform that Chinese gamers can access freely, and they, they do so. Um, from time to time, they have problems with, uh, with connection, etc. But generally speaking, Chinese gamers can buy your game if it's on Steam, period. OK. But what about the whole ISBN thing? Uh, well, when it comes to PC games, generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend applying for ISBN license. What it gets you? Well, it allows you, it frees my hands when it comes to marketing, because without ISBN license, for example, you cannot really do any performance marketing. So we cannot really do, for example, ads on Douyin, like ads on TikTok in, on, on, on Chinese social media. Your hands are tight. You, you cannot do it, basically, without ISBN license. OK, but does it justify investing two years of time into this process? Wouldn't say so. Um, once you get ISBN license, your game is legally is allowed to be legally distributed on local distribution platforms. So, okay, 
when it comes to PC, if you can sell your game on global Steam, why even bother, in theory at least, right? Um, so to step aside for a moment when it comes to PC, so why bother with ISBN? Mobile. When it comes to mobile games, getting into uh, local, like there's their only only way to legally sell your game, at least monetize it, uh, in China is to get an ISBN license and enter local distribution platforms. That being said, I do know some developers who basically, um, in their user acquisition campaigns, target Chinese speaking audiences. And Chinese player base is pretty significant for them and generates. And for, I don't know if, if is there someone uh, who works as a mobile dev here? Okay, not really. Okay, so maybe I won't go into too much detail here. But um, just to finish, finish the thought, um, Chinese gamers are among the biggest spenders in, when it comes to mobile games. So uh, even running uh, user acquisition campaigns on so-called Western uh, social media channels might be worth doing so. Um, but let's get back to the main, uh, main presentation. So that was the, the, the first thing that I covered, right? So my game isn't available in China, the whole ISBN thing. But the, the thing is that you don't, do not necessarily need an ISBN license to sell your, your games uh, in China because they can buy it even without a VPN. And here come the local distribution platforms. The whole, uh, when it comes to gaming ecosystem and PC ecosystem in China, you have two Steams, so Steam Global, Steam China, Steam China being the local platform, and then underlying on, on like kind of the second level, you have different marketplaces, different local distribution platforms, um, such as Haybox. Haybox is, first of all, Haybox is an app, uh, and Haybox uh, can serve as a kind of a front end to, to Steam meaning that Chinese gamers can connect their Haybox account with their Steam accounts. And when they buy uh, games off Steam, they can do it using Haybox as an app. What is more, they can wishlist games. They can wishlist games, they can rate them, etc. I'm going to show it to you on a screenshot in a moment. All right. Uh, Wojtek is telling me all these uh, these things about the Chinese market, platforms, etc. But I don't really speak the language. How how will I learn about, let's say, what what's out there? How will I learn about about the data? Well, we can just use Chrome uh, machine translating the the sites or uh, or, or basically um, other methods like automate uh, automate the translation process, um, and it's worse to do it to be able to read read the comments because let's say that 20 percent of your revenue comes from china and you'd like to know but that, but the reviews are bad majority of the negative review like when it comes to review ratio chinese players do complain a lot by the way Across all the games that, uh, like majority of, yeah, almost game, all all the games that we've worked with, major like all of them have at least one point lower um, reviews on Highbox than on Global Steam. So it's normal. Chinese gamers are generally speaking more like they're more demanding, and you want to know in advance like what are they complaining about. You can act on this uh, know-how, but uh, you can decide to, to, do it, to do it or not to, but at least it's worth knowing what's the, what's the community feedback, what are they talking about, uh, it's, and to also prevent any PR crises. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but on some of our projects, we were able, just by, by informing the, the developer, uh, to prevent, to turn off a feature and to prevent um, maybe not review bombing, but, but a lot of negative reviews about a particular feature within a game. So you want to at least know um, what the Chinese is, is saying. 
to sum it up, we are not talking about Facebook, uh, so any meta platforms, Google is turned off, so we're talking about three main platforms. These are the three main platforms that we as a company focus on, and I recommend to at least start from them. There are a lot more than that, like 15 or even 20 platforms that do cover uh, gaming in China, but it's VR or only consoles, etc. These are three biggest ones. Uh, Douyin and Bilibili isn't really limited to gaming only, but, at this, but at that being said, Bilibili started as a um, like platform for otaku, like for, for Japanese, for anime fans uh, and gamers. Um, and it's kind of a mix of YouTube and Twitch. We use it mostly for content marketing and, uh, and community management as well as outreach to Chinese influencers. It has over 300 million active, uh, active users. Um, and um, around 80% of the audience is male. So this, this is the platform that mostly guys, uh, guys use from the age of like 90 to, to, to 26. Um, and when it comes to its place in the marketing funnel, think of it like, like as of like top of the funnel. The first contact that um, Chinese gamers will, will have with your game is most likely to happen on either Bilibili or Douyin, like these two, these two platforms. And since I mentioned Douyin, so Douyin is kind of the, the equivalent of TikTok, like the original TikTok, actually. Like uh, in, in TikTok, our version of, in ByteDance, our version of TikTok is actually high uh, ban. So the uh, overview, like uh, the, the, um, the outside, suddenly I forgot how to speak English, uh, the, the, the version outside of China, right? So the original TikTok is, uh, is, is Chinese, obviously. Um, as Damian, uh, Damian covered it pretty well, that it's hard to use performance marketing on, on, on Douyin since the competition is really huge. And uh, in order to register an account there, you do need a um, Chinese phone number. But that being said, very often your wish list growth come from Douyin itself. And when, when I was preparing for this presentation, uh, we checked all of the, uh, the projects that we've worked on and um, found 15 most like the best performing videos. And I could divide them into two groups. First group were videos on like one minute or two minute max long videos on Douyin, um, going like from the very beginning, high energy, going over games, USBs cover like a lot of gameplay, etc. like concise material within one, two minutes, everything on the table about the game. Like I watch it, I know everything, let's go. The, the second group were videos that were like long play videos, um, one hour, two hours long. But all of them were um, like first contact with the game. So influencer literally opens the, the game and starts playing it, walking the, the gamers through each, like each step of the way. So th these were the two best performing types of types of videos. If you would like to watch them in more detail, because um, I could, instead of you know covering the market, giving you the basics, I could analyze them um, like on, on a separate separate talk. So if you want to um, learn about them, be sure to reach out uh, to me on LinkedIn. I'll send them to you along with um, a content analysis. So we talked about Billy Billy and Douyin. So Douyin is also top of the marketing funnel. And we have Haybox. So Haybox is this platform where Chinese players can wishlist games, buy them, comment, and review. And the reviews, they can give uh, points. So on a scale of one to 10, so different than, than on Steam, positive versus negative. Um, and Haybox has over 50 million active users. Right? So it's a platform worth, worth checking out. Uh, at least, and it's, uh, I would say, middle of the funnel slash bottom of the funnel. 
Here's a QR code if you would like to, um, if you want to download the app, you can take a picture, scan it, or just go directly uh, into the, the website itself. Um, and uh, we'll go over finding, like how to find your game, uh, what data can be found there, and why, why is, it, uh, is it worth it. So once, once you download the page, uh, the first thing that uh, should um, that is interesting for you is, of course, the the search bar. You can enter your uh, game's name in English, uh, and it will um, it will most likely appear either um, um, like your uh, main game or a demo if you had one playthrough, etc. All right. So once you found your game. This is uh, so some of the um, some of the things that um, will be visible there. You might ask yourself, okay, but how does it even happen? Like I didn't do anything actively. I, like like Haybox didn't reach out to me and ask for my permission, etc. No, it basically automatically scrubs all the data from Steam, puts it on a, on their platform. Um, and when it comes to the data itself, first thing is Zhongwen, uh, so Chinese, whether or not. And it's interesting also to, to note um, the order of things, right? So what's first, what's last? And the first thing is whether it has Chinese or not. So in this case, it supports Chinese. Danren, which is single player. So this is second in order, right? Uh, then, um, in this particular case, since it was number six in the most wishlisted uh, titles and uh, in this particular period, period of time, and we have the information about that. Uh, and then, uh, etc., like about the game, uh, about the genre, uh, etc. And here, we have a wish list number. It's 12.91. One stands for 10,000. So it basically, uh, it had, at that particular time, it had 129,000 wish lists um, from Chinese gamers. And you might say that, okay, so, and these, these are the wish lists that are separate from wish lists on Steam. That being said, sometimes Chinese, it's hard to, to give a, a, like a direct estimate, but sometimes Chinese gamers do wish list a game both on Steam and Haybox. Uh, but generally speaking, um, you can treat it as a like kind of a separate wish list um, for for your game. Has anyone downloaded Haybox already? Yeah, great, awesome. Um, and maybe in the Q and A session we can dive into that. Like, how do you find the the whole experience, and do you find it uh, helpful? So second. Um, Mm, with Hypebox. Second platform I'd like to talk to you about is Bilibili. So um, think of it as a platform for Chinese influencers and uh, for content creation. In our, like, every process we start, first, like, one of the first steps is establishing Bilibili account and uploading uh, localized trailers, gameplays, generally speaking, video assets uh, onto that web page. If you're titles are already have an audience in China, just by registering the account, you can uh, organically grow, grow followers. Um, so one important thing to, to mention here also is you can register an account on Bilibili using a non-Chinese phone number. It's different from, from Douyin. On Douyin, you do need a Chinese phone number. On Bilibili, it's still you still can use a foreign phone number, and it makes things easier. All right, so let's say you do have, um, you do like established account, and what can you do with it? Well, for us, one of the first steps after identifying the potential, so let's say someone contacted us pre-release pre or pre-marketing bit, bit and uh, said, there's, we see a lot of traffic coming from China, but I think the game could do better. Uh, or, at, or let's say it's a sequel. What can we do more? Okay, so let's check. How many videos were posted? And possibly as a second step, reach out to those content creators who posted those videos. 
So how can you check uh, the videos posted about your game? Well, you go to Bilibili, and then uh, you go into a search bar, and again, surprisingly, you can use your English title, the English title of your game, because majority of the content creators do uh, prefer long titles, um, writing both Chinese and English uh, game name, so that it will be uh, easier to find it. And how, uh, again, how to read it. Here's the game, uh, here's the video title, of course. And then when it comes to information, uh, uh, one, so 30 times 10,000. So this particular video got over 30, um, 300,000 views um, and uh, had 600 comments. Um, 20,000 thumbs ups, uh, etc. And um, so this is the information that's, that's out there when you're identifying kind of the, the potential. Uh, and also, when it comes to um, people, person who posted it, um, you can click on their name and then here's their followers count. So again, with this particular character, once you... Uh, uh, you can treat it as a memory, like memory game. I don't know if you're familiar with it. You had to find two similar characters, and um, that way you'll uh, you'll move forward. So one means ten thousand. So that's the follower count, and then um, using Google Lens or any other um, any other tool will help you understand. Uh, what the gamers are, are saying. Are they saying something positive, negative about you as a studio, about that particular game, uh, etc. Bilibili is one of, if not the most um, effective platforms when it comes to community building and community management. Discord doesn't work in China. Discord is um, only, like Chinese gamers can only access it with uh, using VPNs. So when you think of community building in, um, in China, it's very often guerrilla marketing. So what we do, at least try to, because not, it's not an easy process, once we start reaching out to different content creators, we try to identify where, like which one of them are core fans of the game and whether or not they know about WeChat groups, QQ groups, um, covering particular game, and we try to kind of divert their attention to the main Bilibili channel, which is starting to become active with different videos and graphics being, being posted. So that's the uh, also things that you can do with, uh, with Bilibili. Okay, we've covered uh, basics of Bilibili. Um, let's move on to another platform. It's uh, Douyin, so um, Chinese TikTok. It kind of works uh, in a similar fashion, but it's uh, a lot more challenging when it comes to um, content creation because relying entirely on organic traffic is challenging on, on, on Douyin because of the fierce competition there. And to remind you again, you cannot really do ads on Douyin if you do not have an ISBN license. Um, so, again, what I recommend to start with is identifying the content creators who covered your game already. Paid, mar paid campaigns, and this is, a, again, a theoretically off-topic and, and a digression, but uh, at Huqiao, we do not really focus on paid marketing campaigns, like paid influencers, um, like big ones, etc. Why? Well. Um, I spoke with a few of them, and every time I ask about, okay, so could you tell me more about the campaign that you've run? What, how did it affect the wish lists? Do you have any know-how about it from either from um, an agency that you've worked with, like anything at all? Like, did it go good? Like, what was the overall effect? Either with them or with other agencies, they go, Bleh. no idea. So. Uh, it's about identifying, right now we're in the middle of uh, identifying the most 
um, like kind of brewing our own growth wish list potion, you know, uh, identifying uh, the influencers that always generate uh, results and focusing on, on those. But when it comes to what you can do from your point of view as a, as a developer, um, it's worth to first, again, get on Douyin, even the website version, uh, type in your, um, the title of your game, um, and then sort by either by Cui Fabu, uh, which is the new, newest ones, or Cui Duo Dian Zan which stands for um, most liked videos, and then uh, find the, select the, the, the time limit. And that way you'll be able to, um, first of all, check whether there were any videos posted about your, about your game or not, and then possibly um, try to establish relationships with those, um, those influencers if they uh, have WeChat accounts added to their, uh, to their uh, Douyin channels. All right, uh, moving further. The big question, so is it worth in the investment? I very often, like, people I talk with at events or during, during calls, it's one of the most common questions. So does this game hold potential for, for, uh, for the Chinese market? Will it sell well? Uh, a lot of factors. To, to be able to identify it. Kind of a checklist for us is, first of all, are there, is there a significant number of wish lists coming from China organically? Because remember, 25, 10, almost 25, 24% of uh, Chinese, um, of, of users on Steam use Chinese as their main language. It's somewhat a significant, like a, um, a factor of how many players are out there. So that's the first thing. Second, how many videos uh, were posted out there if your game was made, uh, made public? Uh, were there any influencers who posted about it organically without you doing anything on, apart from your global marketing strategy? Uh, is there, so, uh, but it comes to, when it comes to wish list, was the number at least around 10, like when it comes to 10 to 15% of the global uh, wish list that come from China, or at least Chinese-speaking regions. And then, what are the marketing assets available? Do you have a trailer that was already localized and it's just a question of repurposing it, uploading it, uh, or not? But most importantly, is the question of localization. Whether or not you have your game localized into simplified Chinese. Because if not, then that should be the, the, the first step. I'm going to cover that uh, a little bit more on the next slide, but why, uh, why should you uh, include China in your marketing strategy? From our experience, we were able to change um, when it comes to revenue coming from China from three or 5% to 20 or even 30 because the potential is out there. It's just a question of reaching out to, the, to those gamers and letting them know, of course, game genre, um, pricing, of course, uh, is important. Uh, but at the same time, the, the sheer number of, of, of players uh, out there shows uh, that it is possible. And when it comes to uh, things that I started covering a moment ago, so let's say you do have almost ready to go game. Uh, you do have your marketing assets but Steam page is not localized and the game is not yet localized. So by not having a Steam page localized, um, I mentioned Hitbox, right? It will scrap the data from Steam and put it on Hitbox, and Hitbox is a platform only for Chinese gamers. And on a platform only for Chinese gamers, you have your description in English. So you can imagine that it won't help your wishlist growth um, so it's essential not only to, of course, have your game localized into, into Chinese, but also to remember about the, um, the different uh, versions of Steam page. Um, when it comes to influencer outreach, it's essential to have a playable version, a version in Chinese that uh, 
like pre-release to share with influencers so that you could give them some time, type of exclusivity. Chinese influencers are not used to devs reaching out to them, thanking them, showing appreciation uh, for the content that, that they put, up, put out there. And they are eager to feel that they do have an impact when it comes to game development time, uh, to, to, to game development. Some of them do work in game dev or, uh, or in esports. So um, we've had many influencers say to us directly, after all, we're all gamers, right? Yeah, we are, and we tend to listen to each other, to connect with each other. So it's essential to um, to basically show respect in the end, um, and that's one of the main thoughts I'd like to uh, to end with. Since we're approaching a, a Q and A part, just to give you a kind of a glimpse into how we approach this 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 whole topic, uh, there are three main services that that we focus on content marketing, um, community building, and influencer marketing. But, it, but apart from that, there are like a lot of things that, that are possible, that's possible to do, because marketing starts at game design, or if not earlier. Um, and uh, apart from that, focusing on digital events happening on platforms like Bilibili or Steam itself, and adjusting your strategy to that is also, I think, worth uh, worth mentioning. But generally speaking, this is kind of a map of the things that are that are possible, and uh, that's it for for now. Thank you for your time. So, do we have any questions? Uh, hi, thank you for the interesting talk. Uh, our game is already available in China, and we are on Haybox as well. Uh, and what we do right now is that when we have our major updates, we are increasing our budgets for the promotion uh, pro promotional activities in China. So let's say that we had ten thousand USD to spend on the Chinese uh, on the Chinese activities. How would you suggest we spend that budget to make it as effective as possible, especially considering what you said about the uh, high prices? Oh, um, that's a big one, actually. I think we would need at least like 10 to like, I need a lot more data <laughs> to be able to, to answer that. But OK, let's dive in. Um, so you're saying you do have, uh, do you have a distribution agreement with Highbox? Are you at liberty to say that? Yes, they are our distributor, and they are also our marketing agency. All right, cool. Um, so first of all, um, I would try to use, uh, f use, use tools available at hand when it comes to uh, marketing within Haybox because this, for now, it's one of the most like most essential distribution platforms for you. But of course, Haybox does uh, take the, the the revenue cut out there. But I would definitely include them in in the plan. Uh, follow up question: Are you doing any type of organic outreach to influencers? Are you covering influencers in any way, shape, or form? We do, just not in China. <laughs> so that's something to 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 think about. But um, so, so I think what I would do is uh, try to identify whether, uh, like how many videos out, were out there, uh, possibly um, establish relationships with those influencers. If you're talking about a marketing, up, upcoming marketing beat that will happen like, what, three, ta three months from now or something like yeah, that? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Okay, so you do have time to establish those, those relationships. I would um, get them invested in, in the project. Uh, what I mean by that is show appreciation and thank them for, for content. Uh, whether or not Haybox can help you with that, uh, I don't know. I, my bet is that they would focus majority of the budget within their platform 
because in the end, with 50 million active users, it's also worth uh, considering. But at the same time, uh, when you're thinking about long term and thinking about your other releases, uh, it would be worth to at least establish those those relationships if you do have like a Chinese employee working within your company. Uh, if not, I would think of hiring someone to do it. Um, so map out those influencers, establish contact with them, first on Bilibili, then move the conversations to WeChat. Um, and uh, pre-release share, um, share keys or press release, uh, I mean, um, B-rolls, any video materials that will help them in producing content. Basically, consider influencers too. Uh, me personally, I would not put too much emphasis on PR. So media outreach. If you do have good relationships with Chinese Chinese media, okay, press like sending uh, press notes, etc. Okay, but no like placements in other marketplaces or big 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 um, media outlets because it um, it's hard to track very often and uh, that doesn't translate too well into into sales, at least from our experience. Um, and uh, in order to go deeper, I would have to ask about your game, like genre, pricing, um, and like your current, oh, I do have five minutes, and your current uh, marketing strategy. Like for example, do you have any um, community members who do speak, like do you have a Discord server? And if yes, yeah. Do you have a Discord server? Yeah, we do. Uh, but I don't want to waste everyone's time, so I can just follow up on that. Yeah, sure. Okay, but the, uh, just to finish the thought, if you do have a Discord server, next step would be also identifying whether you have Chinese-speaking uh, players there, because they could be, like, if they are, uh, you know, using VPNs to use your Discord server, they're doing this extra step, so they might be, you know, uh, more of a core audience or core, core fans of your game. So it would be good to establish contact with them too. Sure, thank you. Uh, so my question is more so about how you go about the censorship that is in China. When it comes to what many I don't know about this. topics, yeah, the censorship is censored, I know. Um, yeah, so do you usually basically um, let the client know that there are certain topics that, for example, are, well, shouldn't be included in the game before you even start the whole process of reaching out to the influencers and even think about putting it on Haybox? Because otherwise, I mean, I don't really know if it would even be allowed to be published There's a there. thesis in your question, meaning that um, because when it comes to censorship, um, these rules do apply to local platforms, what, what local distribution platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're talking about publishing, I mean, Medbind Studios is one of our clients, right? And um, horror games, um, they are selling pretty well in China when it comes to if we were to establish an official account put out content out there that's a different story what I mean by that is uh, censorship or content adjustment rules do apply on different um, social media platforms it, it's more like the, the, the question of um, regulations uh, it's more applicable when it, when you think of producing content. And uh, if you run an official account for a studio, yes, of course, we do inform, we do talk about it, we do not uh, cover any, or try, at least it's the developer's decision at the end of the day, but we do not want to uh, negatively affect uh, their business in any way, shape, or form. Um, but when it comes to, uh, for example, influencers, once they post a video, uh, they take responsibility for the content on their channel. So it's sometimes when you think of games that are do not go really game okay, are not let's put it mildly are not cozy you know um, survival game for example. Um, then influencers might not be willing to generally speaking create content about it because there is a risk in that. 
and uh, we do not want also to put them at uh, at any risk if they don't want to write. Uh, so that's how more or less we approach this subject. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? If not, then thank you for your time and I hope you enjoy the party tonight.